Bix, of course, came about because it's something that we always wanted because it, it was kind of a reminder of, of Italy yes. and where my father had come from. So we wanted to have this coffee bar with beautifully handmade what we call artisanal ice cream. Obviously the artisanal bread was very important. Yes. And all these very, very authentic products, but in a kind of funky uh, atmosphere. It had to be uh, contemporary and at the same time retro. Retro in that it was retro in terms of the quality of its ingredients. Nothing was mass produced and factory type of production. But funky in that it had to be a place that people wanted to come to because it was edgy and, and modern. And I think we really succeeded in that. If you look at this shop, this shop is actually eight years old. And if you look at the concept behind this shop, basically the fact of the artisanal food and the ice cream that eight years ago, this concept didn't exist in South yeah. Africa. Not at all. Right. Mm. And if you look today, Valvatello, well, there's a number of concepts that are very close to this concept. You know, there's that old ex there's the old saying in the restaurant business, but applicable to all businesses. You are only as good as your last meal. I'm not willing to put anything out that is substandard. I'm not willing to put anything that I don't find perfect out to my customers. Because you want to come to Bix and you want to feel special. You want to feel treated. It's not your fine dining cuisine. It is not your top of the range five star. But it's hearty food. It's home yes. food. It's the kind of food you walk away and you think, you know what, I want to go back there. Yeah. And it's not just the food. It's, as you say, it's the decor. It's the environment. It's the people. It yes. all contributes to it. And if you don't use the best quality, there's no way that you're going to end with the best quality product. Because right. you can't start with an average product and ex expect exceptional, no matter how much work time or effort you put into it. Yes. We serve an amazing chicken. We use free range chicken. We stuff it with lemon and fresh oil. So it's a different offering to what everyone. So you do get rotisserie chicken, pick and pay, all those things. Ours is better. Yeah. And it's the same cost. You charge for a full rotisserie chicken, 65 bucks. Same cheaper price you pay for it. Yeah. Cheaper than Willie's, the same price it's for. But it's a better, it's a better proposition. Yeah. It tastes better. It's moister. It's a better quality of chicken. Mm. So yes, we take. I mean, that chicken cost me about 36 bucks. So it's very high food cost yeah. to serve, mm. Mm. but it's a it's a type of thing that'll bring a person to your shop yes. right. all the way on the way home to come and fetch it. Yes. And you know, a person will never come just fetch a chicken. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. And you know, coffee is still your best item at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, we use a very very high quality coffee. We roast our own coffee, so it's very expensive. My coffee costs each shot of coffee costs me one hundred eighty-five plus VAT. Plus the cost of the machine, and that's extremely the cost of the barista to run it. Yeah. So let's add those figures in, and let's add some. Some will use milk, so let's round it off to about two rand forty ish yes. per cup. But my cheapest coffee is fifteen bucks. Right. So an espresso cost me two rand forty. We sell it for fifteen. And some of these, obviously, we make even more. Mm -hmm. A cappuccino we sell for 20, it costs me maybe 2 and 40, 2 and 50. Yes. So that's where you make, I mean, that's where yeah. you make it up. Okay. If you look at our staff, we don't have a, a major problem in our business, the hospitality business. And I guess almost in any business is huge staff turnover. Yeah. And staff turnover is disruptive to business because, um, you know, you invest time and money in employees. Um, especially the first even couple of years you have an employee it's still a relationship that's a symbiosis but it's more an investment from your side to to create an employee that then becomes an asset human capital for your company right. and when companies don't invest in their employees and they don't show the respect and that have that great relationship people leave obviously and um, and we have in, in our staff, I mean, Bix is only eight years old, but every single member of the opening staff of Bix is still with us. Really? And if you look at Retrovo, we have staff members with 30 years service. Wow. And that's an amazing thing because it actually goes well beyond the employee-employer relationship, but it becomes like a family relationship, very much so. You're treated like family. It's from the day you start here to the day that you leave. It all becomes a family affair because that's what the business is. Mm -hmm. On Sundays, Forty cooks for the management. I cook for my staff to say thank you, to make everyone feel special and 
just to show that listen we do realize what you're doing and we do appreciate all the extra effort you put in because everyone here does go above and beyond what is expected of them. Most businesses don't realize respect is also about giving people self-worth so it's about creating an environment where staff feel worthy, where staff feel valued, where staff are well paid. We pay on average well above the industry standard. We close over December for at least 10 days, so we have forced leave then, but you also get your extra days. I think we get 11 or 12 extra days on top of that, which you take before or after the time period we close. There's no one else in industry who closes for Christmas and for New Year's, and we get all of that off. We get a December holiday. We also close over Easter weekend, so we get to spend Easter with our family, which to me and to my staff is extremely important. When someone walks into Bix, it's not just that they're a customer, they're, they become family. There's a personal connection with each of my staff and every customer. It's like I'm just taking them as my family. And they, it becomes a unity and okay. there's a special connection. So each and every boy who is there, they have to check whether he's satisfied or not to see. From the good to the bad, yeah. customers who get sick and you support them through that, wow. it's everything. Most of them, they come more often, so time and again, like, especially the old ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, they can't walk properly, then I noticed, I'm just checking whether they're coming and then I noticed, I, I, I knew they had time to come. Yeah. So some, they, I just deliver the, 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 the yeah. what they want, while they're still in the car. Okay. It starts as, most of them they like me. <laughs> and at the end of the day, people can taste it. They're not morons. Yes. And you know, I keep on saying that, but it's, it's so important to have the respect for your customer as well. Same respect you have for your staff and this respect. Those are the people that put bread on your table at home and put your kids through wasting. You gotta teach you've got to treat your customers with respect. Uh, it's like most of them they feel at home, like uh, Whatever they need, they, they know. They know that, okay, we, if we can go to Peaks, we can get it. And that's it. I was, <clears throat> it was when? Uh, about uh, two years back, one of the customers come, come there to borrow sugar. Imagine. <laughs> I really enjoy coming to Bix because I love the vibe. Um, it just has a great atmosphere. I love the decor and I love the coffee. The food always of the highest quality and the service is amazing. The sustainability model for business is so important. You can't draw all the money. You can't. Businesses, you have to, have to, have to build into the business plan a investment back into the business which is so important mm -hmm. and b you have to have money put away for the, the tough period you you can't be absolutely reliant on a day-to-day -day cash flow being the same always and so many business people make this mistake is that as the business goes successful mm -hmm. and as the cash floods in they just suck the business dry instead of or just take it all instead of saying, wow, this is a very nice position to be in. Let me use this money at this stage to yeah. do this, to do this. We put some away and then we take some. Yeah. And uh, that's, I mean, it seems such a basic rudimentary point to make. But why, doesn't, why don't people do it? That's why one out of every 10 restaurants lasts longer than two years. One out of 10. That's not me sucking that from my thumb. That's a, a Restaurant Association of South Africa statistic. That's a, and, and that's where you talk about anxiety and opening a business. It's, it is, it's a very nerve wracking thing to open a business. Senza fine, non mi importa della luce.